Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage of the latest mission from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. And while Robinson Smith will be providing our commentary for the duration of this coverage, we are broadcasting from the Space Flight Now News Bureau here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Coming up on the end of a busy week for SpaceX, following the third test flight of its Starship rocket. And now SpaceX is preparing to make its third crack at launching the Starlink 6-44 mission from Historic Launch Complex 39A. It is good to virtually see everyone this evening or afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from around the world. Our Stephen Young is behind the scenes running the technical operations of this broadcast, also pulling double duty, and will be helping to track the vehicle tonight. Zara Adam Bernstein is still on the road back from Starbase in southern Texas, where he did some excellent tracking work on the Integrated Flight Test 3 mission. You'll also be joined later this evening by our friend Pete Carstens for tracking views. As mentioned, you're looking at, as many of you who have been with us for our first two launch attempts of the Starlink 6-44 mission, it's the same Falcon 9 sitting at the heart of LC-39A here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. As we're approaching sunset here on Florida's eastern coast, the space coast of the Sunshine State. We're at T-minus 58 minutes, 4 seconds and counting away from the launch attempt. If you've noticed, we pushed back our start time a little bit. It's because SpaceX was working a technical issue, which they appear to have resolved. And the count is currently moving forward to a planned liftoff at 8.21 p.m. Eastern. Taking a look at the wide view here, jump ahead to weather. The 45th Weather Squadron coming into today's launch weather forecast put out a, an opinion that we'll see 90% favorable weather conditions for the liftoff of this Falcon 9 on this mission. You can see some wispy clouds in the area. You pretty much can't get through a launch weather forecast without just putting the cumulus cloud rule as just sort of a general background watch item. But there's no additional risk items. Upper level wind shear and boost recovery weather are both listed as low in the risk criteria category. So all things considered, it's a pretty optimal night from a weather perspective to launch this Falcon 9. As we get rolling, want to thank our channel members who are with us tonight. Space Flight Now, powered by channel membership. So thanks to folks joining us this evening, like Susan, Bradley Janes, Ayn Lita, Calistia Lee, the astronomers, and many others who are joining us tonight. Really appreciate all your support. JJ, Johnny Will, I see you joining us here this evening, too. For some reason, my live chat is a little buggy, but I believe I saw that Calistia Lee gifted 10 Space Flight Now memberships. Really appreciate that generosity. Kicking us off here, Calistia. If you're one of those 10 lucky recipients, be sure to thank her in the live chat if you haven't already. And a welcome to Patty Alexius for joining us at the pad leader level. Welcome aboard. Shell membership comes with a number of perks, including discounts at our online shop, shop spaceflightnow.com access to 4k views of all our launches from here in florida as well as access to the member only videos here on youtube another great way to support what we do here is by using the youtube super chat feature if you have a comment or question that you'd like to have be a part of the show and it's appropriate to be read on the show feel free to use the youtube super chat 
or you can do as Christopher Jones just did and just offer a little bit of support for our coverage. So thanks to Christopher for a large super chat. Really appreciate that, sir. Last but not least, a great and free way, very helpful to support what we do here at Space Flight Now, especially on live stream days, is just by hitting the like button on this video. So to the more than 4,200 of you who are joining us as we kick off our live coverage, we'd love it if you hit the like button and bring this live coverage to more people. Also, if you're not already subscribed to Space Flight Now, now's a great time to do so. Seems like once we get back home from one trip, we're back on the road for another. We'll be heading out to Texas once again next week. Different area of Texas, though. We're headed back to the Johnson Space Center for some more on-the-ground coverage, talking with the teams from Boeing and NASA as they are preparing for the first crewed flight test of the Starliner spacecraft. So look for some CFT coverage regarding Starliner coming up at the back end of the week. And again, your support helps make on the ground reporting like this possible. So sincere thank you to everyone who's been helping out. T minus 53 minutes, 38 seconds and counting, less than 20 minutes away from the point at which the launch director will give their go for the starter propellant load for tonight's launch. If you haven't been with us on a recent flight attempt, SpaceX is now providing mission audio ahead of the final five minutes of the count, which I'm sure many of you are well acquainted with at this point. It's getting a little dark, but we do have good eyes on the vehicle. Fortunately, it is not a foggy evening tonight. So we'll be keeping an eye on the first stage booster and let you know the signs that we're watching for as fueling begins. Again, SpaceX is targeting a T-0 liftoff currently at 8.21 p.m. Eastern, 0021 UTC for our friends joining us from around the world. If for whatever reason, they are not ready to launch at 8.21 and they have not begun the fueling process, they do have multiple backup opportunities this evening that last until 10.39 p.m. Eastern. And if for whatever reason, none of those pan out, and we have a repeat of the last two attempts. SpaceX does have yet another opportunity to launch the Starlink 6-44 mission tomorrow. That is Saturday, March 16th, starting at 6.27 p.m. Eastern. Currently at T-minus 51 minutes, 50 seconds and counting. As we await the planned liftoff of this rocket tonight, let's go ahead and step through the countdown timeline and let you all know what we are anticipating for this mission and when to anticipate it. Of course, the fueling process starts with the go-ahead to begin that. It'll come up at T-minus 38 minutes. If that green light is given, fueling begins with RP-1, or rocket-grade kerosene, being loaded onto both the first and the second stages of the Falcon 9 rocket. Simultaneously, liquid oxygen is loaded on board the first stage of the vehicle at the T-minus 35-minute mark. T-minus 16 minutes, locks load on the second stage begins. Before that happens, though, we see the so-called big vent event comes up at about T minus 20 minutes and 20 seconds. It happens as the feed lines are chilled. T minus seven minutes. The Falcon 9 first stage uh, Merlin engine chill begins. It involves flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and the turbo pumps, and it protects them from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. About six minutes out from liftoff, the first stage kerosene tank should be full. Then at T minus four and a half minutes, we'll see the strong back retract begin from the Falcon 9 rocket. For those who were with us in yesterday's launch attempt, SpaceX was having some issue with the transporter erector. So hopefully 
all of those issues have since been resolved. They've been working on that throughout the day as the rocket was in a horizontal position there at the pad. About two minutes out, liquid oxygen should be fully loaded on the vehicle. At that point, Falcon 9 is fully loaded with 1 million pounds of propellant. And in the final 60 seconds, control of the countdown is handed over from the ground sequencer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computers. The propellant tanks are brought up to flight pressure. 45 seconds out, the SpaceX launch director gives their go for liftoff. The engine ignition command is issued at T minus three seconds. Of course, if all nine Merlin 1D engines are healthy and ignite, the flight computer will give the command for the hold down clamps to release this bird at T zero. Again, coming up this evening at 8.21 p.m. Eastern, 0021 UTC. It's a little bit breezy out here at the press site. However, not too windy, we believe, to prevent a launch as upper-level wind shear was not a watch item coming into tonight. And SpaceX's ears must have been burning since we are now getting an update from them, noting that we are less than an hour until the launch tonight of these 23 Starlink satellites. SpaceX notes that both the rocket and the weather at this point currently go for liftoff. So a positive update from SpaceX that we are on track for a departure at 8.21 p.m. We will see if, in fact, as the saying goes, the third time is the charm. Now, T minus 48 minutes on the dot. I want to welcome a couple new channel members to the Space Light Now community. Welcome to uh, Dale Pennington at the pad leader level. And a welcome to Paul Moore at the launch director level. Really appreciate the both of you joining us. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. Before we go too much further this evening, I would be remiss if I didn't also make a point to thank our wonderful moderators in the live chat, folks like Stephanie B, who helped keep things kosher in the chat and make sure that everyone is able to pop in and have a good time talking about this launch and other missions coming up. Speaking of other missions coming up, we do have a $5 super chat from one of our wonderful channel members, Mr. Josh King. Good to see you again this evening, sir, who asks if there is a date for the final Delta IV heavy rocket. And I can say yes, in fact, there is. The final launch of the Delta IV heavy from Slick 37 is currently targeting March 28th, end of this month and the end of the Delta family of rockets flying as United Launch Alliance is moving into the Vulcan era. Of course, there are still several Atlas V rockets that are yet to fly, including the one that will be supporting the crewed flight of the Starliner spacecraft. There are also another six that are set aside for the regular crew rotation missions of the Starliner spacecraft, as currently, as it stands, the Vulcan rocket is not a human-rated vehicle just yet. In fact, it's still going through its certification process to be able to fly national security missions. Saw the first flight earlier this year with Astrobotics Peregrine rocket or Peregrine uh, Lunar Lander, I should say. And the second certification flight is coming up with Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane, which actually we got another update on that as well. Sierra Space says it is going through some of its final testing up at the Armstrong in-space propulsion facility in Ohio. 
It's currently going through thermal vacuum testing. The final test phase there for that vehicle makes its way down to Florida. So for those who missed the days of winged space flight from the space shuttle era, not to worry, the Dream Chaser is on its way. T minus 44 minutes, 37 seconds and counting. I want to also thank Jeremy Ladd for a $10 super chat. Really appreciate that, Jeremy, who says, great to have you back, Will. Hope you enjoyed your day off. Looks like my last launch will be the heavy going up on the 28th, and I'll be headed back to the panhandle on the 29th. Well, if you're only going to get one more launch, I'd say the, the final Delta IV heavy is probably as good of a send-off as you're going to get. So hope you get some good pictures, and hopefully the mission doesn't get delayed beyond the 28th, and you're actually able to see that before you head on back up to the panhandle area. We're now T minus 43 minutes, seven seconds and counting. We're about five minutes ahead of when the SpaceX launch director will make the call on the start of propellant load, which given SpaceX's most recent update, it sounds like they are prepared to do, and that is the time at which they will do that. As I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, this is SpaceX's third attempt to launch this mission. As we know from an update from SpaceX after the scrub last night, and if you were with us for our live launch coverage, you know that they gave it a go, scrubbed about two minutes before liftoff, and then provided an update saying that there was an issue with the cradle arm on the transporter erector. They've been doing some testing throughout the day. Part of that testing involved, what you see here, a good bit of venting from the transporter erector. This video you're seeing is a time lapse that we captured about an hour, hour and a half or so. It's sped up about 15 times. looping the video back one more time, you'll notice that the transport erector does retract in this test that you see here. Here you see it'll lean back and then it'll come back upright and clamp up again around the Falcon 9 rocket. So they were making sure that the corrections that they had made earlier in the day did have a chance to have a good test run. It did bring about a good bit of venting in the meantime. 
again, that was a time-lapse video, so it was not uh, real-time. It was sped up about 15 times just so you could see the full breadth and depth of that process in a truncated, roughly 30-second clip. We're now T-minus 39 minutes, 56 seconds in counting. A little less than two minutes away from the call on startup propellant load. I want to thank a few more folks for your support this evening. See, the astronomers joined us with channel membership at the spacecraft commander level. Really appreciate that, the astronomers. Paul Moore has joined us at the uh, launch director level. Daniel Newhouse at the mission specialist level. Donna Hayes at the mission specialist level. Really appreciate you all joining us with channel membership. Glad to have you with us. Welcome aboard. And a thanks to Shirley Benoit for a $2 super chat. Thank you so much for your support, Shirley. Hope you're doing well this evening. As we approach the point at which the launch director is going to make that call on prop load coming up in roughly 30 seconds, though we won't hear that call out. Let's go ahead and talk about where this vehicle will be heading once it leaves the pad. Let's talk a little trajectory, shall we? As has been the case with all the missions launching to the sixth shell of the Starlink constellation, this Falcon 9 will be leaving Florida Space Coast and heading in a southeasterly trajectory, of course, launching from Historic Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Falcon 9 first stage booster will separate and land on one of SpaceX's three drone ships. It's got two based here on the East Coast and the one on deck tonight. It's the one that's been waiting for the last two launch attempts. It is a shortfall of Gravitas. The upper stage is going to continue on with the Starlink satellites. The fairing halves will jettison a bit downrange of this map as well. SpaceX is going to be using the recovery vessel Doug to scoop those out of the water tonight. Of course, it and the other recovery vessel here on the East Coast, Bob, both named after former NASA astronauts Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley, the duo who flew the Demo-2 mission back in May of 2020. First time humans flew as part of the commercial crew program heading up to the ISS. Here's a look at what that recovery process looks like in part. Payload fairing splashdown under parachutes into either the Atlantic or the Pacific Ocean, depending on where the launch is coming from. SpaceX saves about $6 million per recovery, as they noted during a presentation earlier this year. And this is what it looks like when they bring them aboard one of the recovery vessels. This particular one had flown 13 times. SpaceX's flight leader, we believe, either has or will soon be flying its 16th mission to date. We're now T-minus 36 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. Just a little over a minute is when the pellet load process is set to begin on the Falcon 9 rocket, if in fact the go-ahead was given just minutes ago. And if you're outside and you've got a clear view of the sky, tonight is always a good night to look up and take a gander at the moon. want to thank our friend P. Carstens for bringing us this view of our own satellite of Earth. It's been a busy year for lunar exploration, of course as we've had two launches from the United States headed up to the moon. The most recent, of course, Intuitive Machines Nova Sea Lander made its way to the lunar south pole, about 10 degrees north of the lunar south pole. Odysseus currently stationed there, and Intuitive Machines does not believe they'll be able to 
wake it up once lunar morning returns or lunar daylight. But they will certainly give it a try as there's some hope given that the JAXA Slim Lander was able to wake up before the future versions of the Nova Sea Lander and other landers from intuitive machines will be more fortified to survive being in the shadow of a lunar night. Intuitive machines also looking to launch one more time this year in the fourth quarter. Firefly Aerospace also has its eyes on the moon with its Blue Ghost lunar lander also set to launch later this year. And depending on its readiness, as well as the readiness of NASA's Viper rover, Astrobotic may take another crack at landing on the moon with its much larger Griffin lander. Now T minus 34 minutes, 12 seconds and counting. At this point, the fueling process should be getting underway. Here's what we're looking at for that. If you see near the base of the Falcon 9 rocket, sort of where the transporter erector starts to taper in and then go in a more parallel fashion along the side of the Falcon 9 rocket right where there's a little bit of a gradient change on the Falcon 9 first stage is where we should start to see a frost band as the super cold liquid oxygen is loaded onto the vehicle. Once fueling has begun, we usually start to see evidence of that a few minutes into the process. So probably closer to the T minus 31 minute mark is a good chance of when we will see that. We'll also be keeping our eyes out for signs of vapor around the transporter rector in the Falcon 9 first stage. T minus 32 minutes, five seconds and counting. We're starting to see a little bit of vapor, a little bit of a frost ring right around the area I was mentioning. So a good indication that SpaceX has in fact begun fueling for tonight's launch attempt of the Starlink 6-44 mission. And hopefully all goes well and we're actually able to see this Falcon fly tonight. No, T minus 31 minutes, two seconds and counting. Coming up in just about a minute or so, SpaceX will start loading cryogenic helium into the pressure vessels on the Falcon 9 first stage. That helium is used to pressurize the main pellet tanks during flight.
our T minus 29 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. I want to thank Mike Molinari for uh, Buck 50 Super Chat. Really appreciate that support, Mike. And want to thank the more than 14,000 of you who are joining us this evening. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button. Allow more folks to find this live coverage as we continue on in the final 30 minutes before hopefully the launch of this Falcon 9 rocket to kick off the weekend and cap off a very busy week for SpaceX. A week that was initiated by the return of a Dragon spacecraft, Endurance from the International Space Station. A splashdown of the Crew-7 team off the coast of Florida earlier this week. Obviously, another big highlight was the Starship launch from South Texas. And hopefully we can add a Falcon 9 launch to round things out. This Falcon vehicle, as you can tell if you weren't with us for the first two launch attempts, has quite a bit of character on it. That's because it is preparing to join in with some of the other boosters as a flight leader for SpaceX. One of two that will have 19 missions under its proverbial belt once this launch goes ahead. And since we have a little bit of time before the start of the so-called big vent, now is as good a time as any to run down this booster history for you. Talk about the 18 missions it has launched so far as we look ahead to number 19. Vehicle flying tonight is has the tail number of B-1062 in the Space 6 fleet. The following dates correspond with the launch times and dates using UTC or Universal Coordinated Time. The debut of this booster came back on November 5th of 2020. That was the launch of the GPS-3 Space Vehicle, or SV-4. Built by Lockheed Martin, this was the fourth of the newer version of the U.S. Space Force's GPS constellation. It has the nickname Sacagawea, named after the Shoshone woman who guided Lewis and Clark on their expedition in the 1800s. This series of GPS satellites all have nicknames for explorers in their own right. So next up was another GPS-3 space vehicle, number five, launched on June 17th, 2021. That GPS satellite was named for the first person to set foot on the moon, Neil Armstrong. Legacy of the Apollo era, of course, can be followed up with the Artemis missions. Artemis II, as it currently stands, set to launch from uh, Launch Complex 39B, no earlier than September 2025. In fact, over down in Louisiana at the Michoud Assembly Facility, or the MAF, they are finalizing preparations on the core stage of the Space Launch System vehicle that's set to ship down here to Kennedy Space Center over the summer in preparation for stacking of the vehicle ahead of that September 2025 flight. Coming back to this booster, though, its third flight was its first crewed mission. This was on September 15th of 2021. The Inspiration4 astronauts launched aboard Crew Dragon Resilience. This is actually the last time we saw Resilience take flight as it has been put in holding in preparation for the Polaris Dawn mission. That will be the next time that that Crew Dragon launches in support of the first commercial spacewalk. The mission also commanded by businessman Jared Isaacman. Fourth launch of this booster came on January 6, 2022. That was its first Starlink mission. Starlink 4-5 which carried 49 version 1.5 satellites on board. Fifth launch came on April 8th, 2022. It was the second crew mission for this booster when it launched the Crew Dragon Endeavor and the Axiom-1 private astronauts up to the International Space Station. I'll just note for the fueling timelines are T-minus 25 minutes. 
cryogenic helium now being loaded onto the second stage pressure tanks. Flight number six of this booster came 21 days, six hours and 10 minutes after the fifth. That was on April 29th, 2022. Seventh flight was on June 8th, 2022. The Nile Sat 301 mission. Flights 8 through 12 were a series of five Starlink missions. Those were Starlink 4-25 on July 24th, Starlink 4-27 on August 19th, Starlink 4-36 on October 20th, Starlink 5-1 on December 28th, and Starlink 5-4 on February 12th, 2023. The 13th flight of this booster was on March 9th of 2023. That was the OneWeb 17 mission, launching a batch of 40 of OneWeb's broadband internet satellites built right here on Florida's Space Coast at the Airbus OneWeb satellites facility on Merritt Island. This mission was the third and final dedicated launch of OneWeb satellites for SpaceX. OneWeb signed a agreement with SpaceX to launch three batches of its satellites after it lost access to the Soyuz due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Fourteenth launch of this booster was the Arab Sat 7B, also known as Batter 8, it launched on May 27th, 2023. This telecommunication satellite was built by Airbus for Arab Sat. Now provides C and KU band coverage for Europe, the Middle East, and Central Asia. And flights 15 through 18 were also Starlink commissions. Those were Starlink 6-7 on July 28th, 6-23 on October 18th, Group 6-30 on November 28th, and finally Group 6-38 on January 29th of this year, which of course brings us to this launch, Starlink Group 6-44, which hopefully will be ready to lift off from pad 39A in 22 minutes and 22 seconds. We're now T-minus 20 minutes, 34 seconds, and counting. It appears the big vent is now getting underway as the chill-down sequence, or the chill-down of the feed lines on the transporter rector is underway, preparing for second stage locks load, coming up at T-minus 16 minutes.
We're now T minus 18 minutes, 47 seconds and counting. The big vent is progressing well. Another good visual indication that fueling is on track and on time. And again, for those who were not here when I mentioned this up at the top of the broadcast, now that SpaceX is in the process of fueling the Falcon 9 rocket, they are in fact committing to making a run at this launch at 8.21 p.m. Eastern, regardless of the fact that the window extends to 10.39 p.m. Eastern. Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy rockets do not have the ability to hold once the fueling process has begun because the Falcon 9 uses a super chilled liquid oxygen that is especially dense. They basically need to keep fueling almost to the point of right when they launch. Again, though, if for whatever reason they run into more proverbial headwinds, they do have another backup window on Saturday, March 16th, starting at 6.27 p.m. Eastern. Again, if necessary. Fingers crossed that it will not. As we come up to the last minute of the big vent, I want to thank a few more folks for their support this evening. Thanks to Patrick Q for a $10 super chat. And one of my favorites, the Corgi emoji. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks to uh, I Am Lita for a $5 super chat. Really appreciate that, Lita. Good to see you this evening. Who says, hey, Will, glad you're back. Texas was lucky to have you. Well, we were lucky to have Lab Padre as streaming partners. If you didn't have a chance to watch with us live during the Starship IFT3 coverage, the entire video is up on YouTube right now, so you can go ahead and check that out. Also, if you want a more condensed version of the conversation, but with a few more other voices added in, we had a great chat about that during our weekly News from the Press site show that is also currently up on YouTube. And if you'd like to watch, be a part of that show live when it happens, you join us every week at 4 p.m. on Fridays, Eastern Standard, your Eastern time. Thanks to another channel member, Butterfly, for a $2 super chat. Thank you, Butterfly. Who says, Will, how about having an in-person launch party? Hmm. It's certainly something we could explore talking about. I think we'll have to mull through some logistics on that and the timing of everything, but never say never. Might be able to work out something some point down the road i think that could be fun it'd be great to meet some of you who have been channel members or supporters of spaceflight now for some time this is our 25th year of existence as a publication so might be a good excuse to have a little party talk to steven after the show and see what we might be able to cook up our thanks also to Roseanne DeVasto for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Roseanne, who says, I really appreciate your historic info and ongoing commentary. We're happy to provide some good context for this and all the launches that we cover. Our thanks also to Don Pierce for a $2 super chat. Thank you, Don. And to the Pinester for a $5 super chat. Thank you, Pinester. And thank you to the nearly 25,000 of you who are a little more than 25,000 of you who are watching live. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button as we are now less than 15 minutes away from the launch of the Falcon 9 rocket. Get some more folks in to enjoy a Friday night flight.
Sacramento T minus 12 minutes, 25 seconds and counting. Coming up, the next fueling milestone will be the chill down sequence for those nine Merlin 1D engines. It involves flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and turbo pumps, protecting them for the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. I want to thank a few more folks for their support as we continue on through the count. Thanks to Troy Chaplin for a $2 super chat. And before we continue on, want to bring you a pretty cool celestial view, actually. That dot you're seeing passing by is actually the International Space Station. We are fortunate to have a clear view of it. And because of the time of day, we believe what we're seeing is the reflection of the solar panels from a setting sun. But based off of where it is and the angle of the solar panels, we're actually getting the sun reflecting off of those and back at our friend Pete Carson's camera, which is allowing us to see the station as it passes by over the space coast. So at the same time as you're seeing a Falcon 9 rocket live on the screen to the right, you're also seeing several humans up there who were brought aboard to the space station by another Falcon 9 rocket. And of course, the Soyuz for those on the Russian segment. So be sure to wave hey to the seven folks flying high above, going at a blistering 17,500 miles per hour. Going back to the live chat here, I want to thank a few more folks as we continue on the last 10 minutes of the count. Another great channel that is also covering the advances and exploration on the space front. Channel What About It with a $10 super chat. <laughs> a very generous message. Uh, coffee on me. Thanks to the team over on that channel. They do a lot of good work over there, and it's always wonderful to see the space community supporting each other, especially during a very busy launch week where Starship brought us all up at a very uncomfortable hour, but for a very exciting flight. I also want to thank Ravi Rudra for a dollar super chat. Thank you, Ravi. To Erin for a $2 super chat. Tim says, bringing the heavens closer to Earth. Thank you, Tim. Kathy Shomick with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Kathy. One of our wonderful channel members, Glenn A., with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Glenn. Hugh Gelston upgraded their membership to the mission specialist level. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate that, Hugh. Gail Paul with a five dollars super chat. Thank you, Gail. Gail, excuse me. James Jester with a five dollars super chat as well. Thank you, James. Tim K with a ten dollars super chat. Thank you so much, Tim. Who says this is the best part of living in Florida? Referring to seeing all the launches we get here, which is very fortunate. Aaron Crowder with a two dollars super chat, saying thank you for everything. You're very welcome. Pedro Seely with a $2.79 Canadian dollar super chat. Thank you, Pedro. E. McCoy with a $2 super chat. Thank you, E. Jay Mace with the same. Thank you, Jay. And Mr. Llama with a $10 super chat. And a little bit of love. We're now T minus seven minutes, 55 seconds and counting. As we are coming up uh, less than a minute from the chill down sequence beginning. It's a good time to talk about the vehicle that will be supporting this uh, flight tonight. Of course, SpaceX's workhorse, the Falcon 9 rocket, stands at 70 meters or 229 feet tall with a diameter of 3.66 meters or 12 feet. 
Two thirds of that made up by the first stage. Today's booster, as we've talked about with the flight history, has flown 18 times before with a tail number of 1062 in the SpaceX fleet. At the base of the first stage are nine Merlin 1D engines, which burn rocket grade kerosene and liquid oxygen and produce 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Around the engine compartment, you can see those black carbon landing legs that will be used to land the first stage on the drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas. Above the first stage is the inner stage. It's a composite structure consisting of an aluminum honeycomb core surrounded by carbon fiber. In the image you see there on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the deployable hypersonic grid fins. These are titanium winglets that provide stability and steering for the Falcon 9 as it falls through the atmosphere for tail first like a big old dart. At the top of the inner stage are three mechanical latches that attach to the second stage. At first stage main engine cutoff, high-pressure helium is used to release those latches and four pneumatic pushers ensure a clean separation. The second stage engine nozzle is housed safely inside the inner stage adapter until stage separation. Speaking of that second stage, as we close in on the final six minutes of the count, the upper stage is powered by a single modified Merlin engine called a Merlin vacuum engine or an MVAC engine. It's equipped with a large nozzle, which is optimized for burns in the vacuum of space, hence the name. It produces more than 200,000 pounds of thrust, and it will be fired twice on today's flight to place the 23 Starlink satellites into their intended orbit. The MVAC engine burns the same propellant mix, RP-1, or rocket-grade kerosene, and liquid oxygen, same as the first stage. It will ignite a third time after deployment of the Starlink satellites for a deorbit burn, which will drive the upper stage back into the atmosphere, where it will burn up, helping to eliminate the risk of any unnecessary space debris during this mission. Coming in on five and a half minutes before flight, above the second stage, of course, at the top of the rocket, halo of fairings, the things that house the 23 Starlink satellites. They're made up of a carbon composite material, is 13.1 meters or 43 feet tall, and 5.2 meters or 17.1 feet in diameter. The two halves of the payload fairing will be recovered a little further downrange from where the first stage lands on the drone ship. They gently splash down under parachutes, as we showed you earlier. The recovery ship Doug is going to scoop them out of the water and return them to Cape Canaveral, where they will be refurbished and reused on a future mission. We are now T minus four minutes, 38 seconds and counting. We are now getting some video. We'll be bringing in the audio from SpaceX as we're closing in on the point where the strong back retract sequence begins. We'll start with the clamp arms underneath the retract. payload started. fairing opening up. And the transporter erector, as they were testing earlier today, will recline about a degree and a half away from the vehicle. And it does not appear as though the clamp arms have opened up, which is certainly not a great sign. It's something that they were working on earlier today. And as they've moved to a wider shot, they may be troubleshooting something, but they don't have. OK, they're open now. So looks like they've just were a little bit slow on that process. Start to see the transporter rector move back away from the vehicle. Stage one locks load is complete. I'm due to call out for stage one locks load. Last fueling item will be for stage two lock load, and we are seeing a gap between the transporter wreck and the Falcon 9, so it has reclined that necessary degree and a half.
So it appears as we're coming into the last two and a half minutes that things remain on track for launch tonight. We'll continue to monitor the progress as we come through the final couple minutes of the countdown. Stage two lock slot is complete. And with confirmation of stage two lock slot complete, the Falcon 9 is now fully fueled with one million pounds of propellant. To come into the final minute and a half here, the venting you're seeing are the ground gas closeouts. Ground gas closeouts. With that call out, we're coming into the final minute before liftoff. Coming up at T minus 45 seconds is when the SpaceX launch director will give their go for launch if they are ready to fly tonight. The SpaceX feed is about 10 seconds slower than real time, so you'll hear that call out on a Talking slight delay. Go for launch.
you're seeing some great tracking views from our friend Pete Carstens. A little bit of a jellyfish effect as you saw the payload fairings falling away. Now a little over four minutes into flight. Coming up next will be the first stage entry burn, coming up at T plus six minutes and 10 seconds. That burn will last about 23 seconds. We're going to call out that the flight continues nominally as we enter into the fifth minute of the mission. That band you're seeing just beyond the Falcon 9 second stage, a little bit of a glint from the edge of the Earth, just a touch of the atmosphere against the setting sun. Now about five and a half minutes to flight. In about 30 seconds, the first stage entry burn will begin. Frumpy Carstens with Max Q Productions still getting some great views of the second stage. The Merlin vacuum engine continuing to burn. Now six minutes into flight. And there you see the start of the entry burn. Caught by Pete Carson's. Well done, Pete. This burn lasts about 20 seconds or so. Coming to a conclusion now in real time. You're seeing the slight delay on the SpaceX feed, as you can see from the onboard cameras. With the conclusion of the entry burn, the next event coming up will be the first stage landing burn as the vehicle continues to make its way towards the drone ship. You can see the uh, speedometer for the Falcon 9 first stage booster is slowing dramatically as it makes its way down towards the drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas. That entry burn set to begin or excuse me, the landing burn set to begin in less, just about 30 seconds. Stage one, transonic. For the call for stage one, transonic is now slowed to below the speed of sound. Coming up at the start of the entry burn here in, or the landing burn Terminal in guidance. real time. We'll see it here on the SpaceX feed in a few seconds. Stage one landing burn. There you see the landing burn beginning. We should see some drone ship views on the right-hand side of your screen momentarily. Stage one landing leg deployed. Those landing legs are out. Stage one landing confirmed. And a good touchdown 
of this Falcon 9 first stage booster, tail number 1062, for a 19th time landing safely. I'm back shot, Dad. Good call on the MVAC shutdown. Should hear a call out on nominal orbit insertion. On that orbital insertion. The Falcon 9 second stage will remain in a coast phase now in that parking orbit until T plus 54 minutes and 11 seconds. That burn of the second stage Merlin vacuum engine is going to happen for just a brief two seconds. Setting up for a Starlink satellite deployment at T plus one hour, five minutes, and 20 seconds. And apologies, I realized at some point I was muted there during some of the early points of liftoff, so... Apologies for that. But fortunately, the video is not muted, which arguably is the most important thing. Much more important that you can see the launch. Also good if you can hear the commentary. Before we go ahead and get to the mission stats to close out the show, I want to thank a few more folks for their support, since we certainly can't do this live launch coverage without you. So our thanks to Aaron Crowder for a $2 super chat. Thank you, Aaron. Our Spaces Inc. for a $2.79 super chat. Thank you so much, Our Spaces. E. McCoy with a $2 super chat. Thank you, E. Uh, Jay Mace for $2, Mr. Lama for 10, really appreciate that. Island Thrifts with a $5 super chat. So sitting on Patrick Beach. I'm guessing you were able to figure out the uh, idea of the launch time there if you were on Patrick Beach. Uh, Pamela Hale with a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you, Pamela, for supporting on that level. Our thanks as well to Raymond Schneiders for a $10 super chat saying, well done. Thank you, sir. Teresa Fry with a $5 super chat and a first time watcher of possibly our channel or perhaps a launch. But either way, we're glad you could be with us for your first launch experience. Thanks to Greg Henska for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you, Greg, for that. Ryan with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Ryan. Oscar Guzman with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Oscar. Scott with a $2 super chat saying watching from California. Thank you, Scott. And we've got another California launch just over the horizon here. The Starlink 7-16 mission is coming up the evening of the 18th. So it'll be here before you know it. Thanks to Alexander Erickson for a $5 super chat. Thank you, Alexander. Thanks to Ryan for a $2 super chat. Trying to get a message of love for the community. Robert Snow joining us with channel membership at the mission specialist level. Thank you so much, Robert. Jack Wagner with a very generous $30 super chat. Thank you, Jack, for supporting us on that level. Jack says, watching you guys from Wasilla or Wasilla, Alaska. Apologies, Jack, but mispronounced the uh, name of that area of Alaska. Feel free to correct me. David Crockett, good to have a historical figure in the live chat with a $10 super chat and saying hello from Tennessee. Hopefully your uh, oxen is doing well, Davey. Kim Rockburn with a $2 super chat. Thank you so much, Kim. I suppose I'm thinking of Paul Bunyan, not David Crockett. Mel Roberts Herald with a $5 super chat. Good to see you this evening, Mel, one of our wonderful channel members, saying better late than never. And yes, third time was the charm. Sunset time in Chicagoland. Thanks for checking in. T-Rex triple four with a $5 super chat saying, let's light this candle. And yes, they finally did. Robert Robinson with a 
How would super chat? Thank you, Robert, who says it's 10 13 a.m. in the UK. Please give Laura a shout out. Tell her to wake up before she missed the launch. Oh, darn it, Robert. Well, hopefully, <laughs> Laura, you are awake for the launch tonight. Thank you, Kathy Foley, for a very generous $20 super chat saying thank you for all you do. Well, thank you, Kathy, for supporting our coverage this evening. And thanks as well to David Miller for a $10 super chat saying great commentary, like the format. Thank you for the nice, kind words. Thanks as well to Alexander Erickson again for another $5 super chat. A little bit of sass in the comment. Appreciate a good bit of sass and a funny emoji to go along with it. Tracy Nichols with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you to Hill Street Blues for a $5 super chat saying y'all do a great streamcast. Thank you for supporting it. Rob, Rob H with a $5 super chat. A little bit of support there from Rob as well as Chris Thompson with a $2 super chat. Thanks to you both. Hill Street Blues with a $5 super chat asking if the people on the ISS ever see the launches. Uh, it entirely depends on A, if they're awake, since they have a sleep cycle that I believe is based on uh, either Central Time or UTC. So it is based on UTC, as Stephen is correcting me in my ear. Uh, Should have gone with my gut. And it depends on where they are in position to the pad uh, you know, time of day, brightness of the launch vehicle, there's certainly a chance for it. And I know whoever is on the station is always looking out for the opportunity to see cool opportunities like that. Our thanks to Chris Thompson for a $5 super chat as well. Mel joining us again with another $5 super chat as we were in tracking mode saying, damn, excellent video coverage, Mr. Pete. Parentheses excludes the Texas accent. It came through on that one. One of our wonderful moderators, Astro Joe, with a little bit of generosity, gifting a Space Flight Now membership. Thank you, Astro Joe. Good to have you with us tonight. In addition to Stephanie B, helping out with the moderation duties. Our thanks to Gregory B for a $2 super chat. Adding a couple new channel members here, Rosanna Vasto and Allison Elliott, both joining us at the pad leader level. Really appreciate that from the both of you. Uh, Daniel Parup with a, a super chat here asking if a view of them being deployed will be possible. Uh, I'm assuming you mean the Starlink satellites. And unfortunately, no, uh, SpaceX no longer continues access to its onboard cameras following the uh, beginning of the parking orbit. And so unless they decide to go ahead and post a video after the fact, which they sometimes do, especially if it's a notable deployment of Starlink satellites, we may see that, but again, it will be a pre-recorded video. Uh, we will not be seeing deployment live. Thank you for the question. Our thanks to... Lux Serafina with a $5 super chat saying excellent coverage, literally real time video watching live from Merritt Island. Well done. As we strive to make sure that our latency is low and that you're seeing everything as close to real time as easily possible. Thanks to Duff Chick for a $5 super chat as well. Channel member Dale E. Uh, Pennington with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Dale, for being a channel member. Thanks to DB Multimedia Productions for a $2 super chat, saying thanks for the excellent coverage. By Young Rai for a two pound super chat. Bang checking in from Gloucestershire, UK. 
Thanks for the support there. Jeff Rozick Sr. with a $10 Super Chat. Thank you, Jeff. Joanne Molinero with a $2 Super Chat. Thank you, Joanne. Thomas Connor with a $5 Super Chat saying great coverage. Thank you, Thomas, for supporting it. Our newest channel member, Darren Cates, joining us at the pad leader level. Thank you for your support, Darren. Mary Beth Campo with a $10 Super Chat. Thank you, Mary. And finally, John with a very generous $20 Super Chat. Thank you, John. And with all the support present and accounted for, let's go ahead and close out as we always do with a look at the mission stats and where we stand now with SpaceX and on the global stage. This was the 19th flight of Falcon 9 Booster 1062, the 310th Falcon 9 launch to date. This was SpaceX's 25th Falcon 9 launch of 2024. This was the 254th Bal uh, Falcon Booster reflight, or the launch of a booster that has flown at least once. This was SpaceX's 26th or, or excuse me, 26th launch of 2024, including, of course, the Starship launch. This was SpaceX's 104th orbital launch in the last 365 days. The Starship launch was a suborbital flight, of course. This was SpaceX's 77th flight from Pad 39A and the 170th overall orbital launch from Pad 39A. Moving out to a look at the Falcon family of launches on the year. Again, we've got 25 so far against the 96 flown in total for 2023. Moving on to some recovery stats, this was the 61st landing on the drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas, the 220th SpaceX drone ship landing to date, and the 284th overall SpaceX booster landing. Finally, taking a look at the global launch picture, this was the 17th orbital launch from Florida this year, the 26th orbital launch from U.S. soil. This was the 29th orbital launch from a U.S. rocket company, including V3 from Rocket Lab, and of course the Vulcan launch from United Launch Alliance. And this was the 50th orbital launch around the globe. Fortunately, though, spaceflight is not without its challenges. There have been two launch failures. Taking a look on the global stage, we will note moving forward the launch failures by the asterisk next to the number of the country from which they were launched. You had a private uh, launch provider on their maiden flight leaving from Japan that unfortunately saw their solid rocket blow up about a uh, it was like five seconds into flight. And a Long March 2C vehicle from China also had a rare upper stage issue on the vehicle. It was launching a pair of spacecraft that were bound for it's believed lunar orbit. Unclear the status of those two satellites now, but likely lost as well. As you see the strong back coming back upright. I want to let you know about a couple of other missions that we are tracking from Florida Space Coast. I mentioned the Starlink 6 dash, or excuse me, the Starlink 7 16 mission coming up on the 18th, no earlier than from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. From here on Florida Space Coast, Happened to spot a pair of payload fairings passing by the VAB just recently. 
these, we believe, are heading to Launch Complex 39A, likely to be another batch of Starlink satellites, which will more than likely be the next mission to launch from the pad you see there on the right-hand side of your screen, LC-39A. Next mission from Slick 40, though, is going to be a commercial uh, resupply services, or CRS mission, heading up to the International Space Station. This will be the first time that a second-generation Dragon spacecraft will be launching from that pad, heading up to the ISS, as the launch, uh, excuse me, the crew access tower has been completed, and they are closing out some of their certifications on all the items that are needed to support second generation dragon flights and soon they will be able to support humans launching from there spacex said that they will be ready by the crew nine mission for that or just a little bit thereafter however nasa officials say they are planning on using it no earlier than the crew 10 mission And before we go ahead and say goodbye, I want to thank one more person for a uh, very generous super chat. Our thanks to uh, Shota for our 1,000 yen super chat. And Shota says, thank you for the wonderful launch and congrats. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you so much. And with that, we're going to go ahead and close out our coverage of the Starlink 6-44 mission. Our thanks to our friend Pete Carstens with Max Q Productions for helping to track this mission as well as provide us some great views of the ISS passing overhead. Our thanks to Adam Bernstein, who was not with us for this particular launch, but with us in spirit as he's heading back from Starbase in Texas. Our thanks to Stephen Young running the technical operations behind the scenes. Our thanks to our other astute photographer, Michael Kane. If you're not already following the fellas on X, you can find them at Aburn NYC. For Adam, Michael is at MD Kane Jr. And of course, be sure to follow Space Flight Now simply at Space Flight Now. We're also on Threads as well as Facebook, so be sure to look for our coverage there. Most importantly, thank you for spending part of your evening with us, kicking off the weekend with a Falcon 9 launch, the 50th orbital launch of the year. For all of us here at Space Flight Now, we'll be back with more launch action in the very near future, as is always the case, seems like, with Space Flight these days. But until then, be good to yourselves, be good to others, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.